The last subtopic in ecology is population ecology. Kalau in ecology, we study the ecosystem as a whole. Ada banyak komponen in the ecosystem. Tapi untuk population ecology, kita fokus kepada the dynamics of the population. So what is population ecology? It's the study of how the biotic and the abiotic component of the environment will affect memberi kesan kepada density, distribution, size and age of the population. So, macam mana environment akan memberi kesan kepada semua ni? So, the first component in population ecology is population growth. So, what is population growth? So, it's the increase in total number of individual in the population. There are three main factors that influences population growth. So, ada biotic potential, ada environmental resistance, ada carrying capacity, ada natality and mortality. So, ada empat faktor utama yang boleh menentukan sama ada population itu meningkat ke, menurun ke ataupun remain unchanged. So, first, we look into biotic potential. Biotic potential is the maximum reproductive rate. Kadar reproduction yang maximum that organism can undergo when they are in optimal condition. Optimal condition tu maksudnya environment tu ada banyak makanan, ada banyak resources, ada banyak space. So basically semua benda sesuai. So under that particular optimal condition, the organism will be able to reproduce at their maximum capacity. So, itu kita panggil sebagai biotic potential. Biotic potential is determined by the reproductive age of that organism. Pada umur berapa organism tersebut sudah boleh start to reproduce. For example, for bacteria, ada bacteria yang dia punya reproductive age itu within 20 minutes. Maksudnya, setiap 20 minutes, bacteria tu boleh undergo binary fission. So, in that case, ada high reproductive rate sebab dia punya reproductive age dia sangat cepat. Kalau human, kita punya reproductive age adalah pada umur 14 ataupun 15 tahun. So, that is reproductive age and then we have the number of offspring produced each time. Ada berapa offspring yang organism to produce apabila dia reproduce. For example, kalau bacteria tadi, satu kali binary fission, dia boleh produce two new individual. Satu akan menjadi dua. Kalau human, in general, setiap human apabila mengandung, dia akan produce satu je anak. Kalau kucing pula boleh buat tiga ataupun empat offspring at the same time. So, itu maksudnya number of offspring produce each time. So, semakin banyak number of offspring produce, so dia punya reproductive rate dia lagi tinggi lah. So, the size of the population akan meningkat dengan lagi cepat. Next, frequency of the reproduction. So, ini adalah kekerapan satu organism tu boleh reproduce. Kalau bakteria tadi, setiap 20 minit, dia boleh reproduce. Tapi kalau human, setiap kali mengandung lebih kurang 9 bulan. So, satu cycle of reproduction for human is 9 months. Lastly, the survival rate of the offspring. Adakah semua offspring yang produce itu boleh survive sampai ke mature age ataupun tidak semua? So, itu adalah survival rate of the offspring. So, all of these factors will determine the maximum reproductive rate for that particular organism. So, the next factor that affect the population growth rate is the environmental resistance. Environmental resistance is any biotic or abiotic factor that can limit the population growth yang boleh mempengaruhi population growth. So, tak kisahlah faktor tu living ke ataupun non-living faktor asalkan dia boleh limit the population growth so itu adalah environmental resistance. 
So in general, there are two groups of environmental resistance sama ada density dependent factor ataupun density independent ataupun non-dependent factor. Maksudnya, ada biotic and abiotic factor boleh melimitkan population size kalau density itu tinggi. For example, macam food. Semakin banyak organism dalam satu environment tersebut, lama-lama food itu akan menjadi tidak cukup sebab sudah banyak sangat individu yang makan the same kind of food. Shelter pun sama, pelindungan, tempat organism itu untuk berlindung. Space, dia punya habitat dia, dia punya mating dan juga dia punya toxic waste in the environment. So, these are example of density dependent factor. Iaitu factor yang akan limit the population size apabila density in the population itu tinggi saja. So, kalau density masih rendah, factor-factor ini tak akan limit population growth, population size. In contrast, for density non-dependent ataupun independent factor, so factor ini boleh mempengaruhi population size regardless of the density of the population. For example, macam forest fire. Kebakaran hutan boleh menyebabkan many organism mati tak kisahlah organism tu banyak ke sikit dia punya density. Ataupun flood, banjir ataupun earthquake. So basically natural disaster macam ni adalah density independent factor. Dia boleh melimit population size tak kisahlah population size tu sikit ke banyak. Next we have carrying capacity. So carrying capacity is the maximum number of individual ataupun number of species which can be supported by the environmental resources of a habitat. So, dalam satu habitat tersebut, dia akan mengandungi resources, natural resources yang limited, yang terhad. So, jumlah resources yang ada dalam habitat tersebut boleh support a maximum number of individual ataupun species sahaja. So, this maximum number kita panggil sebagai carrying capacity. So, how much is the maximum number? It's depend on the resources. Berapa banyak resources yang ada as well as the rate of consumption. Berapa cepat organism dalam population tersebut menghabiskan resources yang ada. So lastly, we have natality versus mortality. So natality adalah birth rate, kadar kelahiran. Mortality is the death rate, kadar kematian. So, how natality and mortality will affect population growth is kalau natality is more than mortality, so population size akan increase. Kadar kelahiran lebih daripada kematian, so population size akan meningkat lah. And then natality is less than mortality, yang lahir sikit, yang mati yang banyak, so population size will decrease. Lastly, kalau sama. So, when the rate of birth is equal to the rate of death, so population size will maintain ataupun remain unchanged. Size dia akan maintain sahaja tak akan berubah. So, that was the factors that affect the population growth. So, next, we will look into population growth curve. There are two main types of growth curve, some other logistic ataupun sigmoid. Previously, in chapter growth, kita pernah tengok graph ini, sigmoid growth curve. An example of organism that shows sigmoid growth curve adalah paramecium. Ataupun, most population of organism akan ada logistic ataupun sigmoid growth curve. So, example yang akan boleh state adalah paramecium species. And then, another type of growth curve is exponential growth curve. Yang ini adalah human population. So, awak kena kata human population iaitu merujuk kepada population punya growth curve. Bukannya satu individu human tu punya growth curve. So, tak sama. So, this is how the exponential growth curve looks like and then the logistic ataupun sigmoid growth curve looks like. Okay, kita tengok logistic ataupun sigmoid growth curve dahulu. So, macam sebelum ni, sigmoid growth curve ada four main Phase. The first one is lag phase. 
So like phase is when the population growth is very slow. Dekat bawah ni. So slow. Increase in the size of the population. So kenapa ada slow increase in population? Sebab the organism is still adapting to the new environment. And then number of reproducing individual masih rendah. And then organism increase in size and not in number. Maksudnya organism itu masih lagi belum matang. So mereka masih increase in their size. Dia belum achieve lagi reproductive maturity. Umur untuk dia reproduce. Second, exponential growth phase ataupun log phase. So dekat sini population growth will occur rapidly. Akan ada peningkatan size dengan sangat cepat So kat sini kita nampak Shape of the graph akan increase dengan sangat cepat Iaitu secara exponential Hence the name exponential growth phase So kenapa ada rapid growth? Sebab in this phase Organism will reproduce very close to their biotic potential So ingat biotic potential tadi Is the maximum number of individual That is produced under optimal condition. So sekarang memang optimal condition. Next, in terms of natality and mortality. So natality is more than mortality. Oleh kerana yang lahir lebih banyak daripada yang mati. That's why the size of population can increase. Next, decelerating phase. So in decelerating phase yang berlaku selepas exponential phase. The population growth starts to slow down. Dia still ada growth, still ada peningkatan, tetapi dia punya rate itu sekarang semakin rendah. Dia punya growth rate itu akan lebih rendah daripada semasa exponential phase. Kenapa? The main reason for this is because of the sekarang sudah ada environmental resistance di dalam population tersebut. Maksudnya sudah ada faktor-faktor yang boleh melimitkan population size. For example, resources sudah semakin sikit ataupun waste sudah semakin banyak menyebabkan kadar kematian meningkat. So because of the environmental resistance, mortality will increase but natality is still more than mortality. Secara overall, kadar kelahiran is still more than mortality, kadar kematian. Tetapi jumlah mortality dalam decelerating phase lebih tinggi daripada jumlah kematian mortality semasa exponential phase tadi. So example of environmental resistance that exists during this phase includes competition for resources ataupun other limiting factor. The last phase is stationary phase. So stationary phase is when the population achieve maximum size. And the maximum population size is determined by the carrying capacity of that environment. So at this point, natality will equal mortality and the net production of growth is zero. Maksudnya population size tu tidak decrease ataupun tidak increase. Dia akan remain unchanged. Dia akan mendata sahaja. So itu adalah stationary phase. Next, the second growth curve is exponential growth curve. For example, human population. So, exponential growth curve mainly about unlimited growth of a population. So, maksudnya population itu still growing secara unlimited according to their biotic potential. So, exponential curve ada dua sahaja dia punya phase iaitu lag phase dan juga log phase. So sama macam sigmoid growth curve tadi, so during lag phase, population size will increase slowly. So kenapa increase slowly? Sama juga because they are still adapting to the new environment. The number of reproductive individual is still low. And then after lag phase is log phase ataupun exponential phase. During exponential phase, sama juga, population size will increase rapidly over time. Dia akan ada rapid increase in the population. So, for human, the reason for human population still in the log phase of exponential phase because of improved healthcare and medical system. 
and then ada increment of food production sebab kita ada agriculture and then better waste products treatment and management so these are the main factors yang menyebabkan kenapa human population generally still in log phase menjadikan kita punya growth curve to be the exponential growth curve so kita tak capai lagi decelerating phase Kenapa kita tak masuk decelerating phase sebab kita tak ada environmental resistance lagi. Kenapa kita tak ada environmental resistance because of this factor lah. So semua ni menyebabkan human population tidak lagi ada environmental resistance. So technically exponential growth curve adalah sebahagian daripada sigmoid growth curve. Cuma kita baru masuk dia punya lag dan juga log tak sampai lagi decelerating so that's it for exponential growth curve